AFC playoff weaknesses. Starting with my Pittsburgh Steelers. What's the Steelers' biggest weakness? Let's get this over with. I'm a Steelers fan. Let's get them over with. They're the seventh seed. Their biggest weakness is their only way to win is for you to screw up. It's quite that simple. Now, I'm not trying to disrespect or disregard the level of talent that's on the Steelers' roster. I think it's a very talented roster. Even without T.J. Watt, which is a devastating loss against the Buffalo Bills, Steelers are 1-10 without T.J. Watt. It's still a great pass rush with Alex Highsmith. Uh, you, you got, obviously, uh, Cam Hayward down inside. Good linebacking core, even with the injuries. Excellent secondary. Joey Porter, Patrick Peterson, Mika Fitzpatrick. Like, you got some dudes on that secondary. Offensively, Pickens, uh, Najee Harris, Jalen Warren, Deontay Johnson, Pat Fryermuth. Like, you got some, you got some dudes on that offense. But Pittsburgh, in large part due to limited quarterback play and in large part due to the inability to kind of adjust to the modern NFL, they kind of have to just rely on you screwing up and then taking advantage of you screwing up. Uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers this season are 8-2 and two when they win the turnover battle. So basically at Buffalo, don't shoot yourselves in the foot and you will beat Pittsburgh. Like they can't, they can't win just playing just straight up or if they're even in the turnover battle. That's the biggest weakness with the Pittsburgh Steelers. That's the reason they will not win the the Super Bowl. The six seed Miami Dolphins, their biggest weakness is they're too beat up and the quarterback is bad. I mean, bad in big games. And for this weekend, I'll, I'll detail it more later. I'll, I'll give you the stats on this later. But Tua Tungavailoa is horrendous in cold games. But Tua, in his career, in either win or go home situations or win and keep yourself alive situations, dating back to his rookie year, week 17 against Buffalo, he had a pass rating in the low 60s. Week 17 in 2021 against Tennessee, he had a pass rating in the low 50s. Uh, this a couple weeks ago against Baltimore, where if you win, you're the one seed. He had a pass rating of 71, 72 if you round up. And then he gets Buffalo last week. He had a pass rating again in the low 60s. I like Tua. I think he's a franchise quarterback. I think he's a top 12 guy in the league. He's not the type of dude who can carry you under adverse circumstances. That's just not how he's how he's, how he's wired. How you know he's able to, to, to get it done with this Miami Dolphins offense. That's the biggest weakness. And as far as the two injury part, listen, Bradley Chubb's out. Jalen Waddle's out. Uh, Raheem Mostert speed up. We'll see if he's able to come back along with, with A-Chan. Uh, they've been dealt with, dealing with a ton of injuries. Xavier Howard is injured. So this Miami Dolphins team is just too beat up. Tua Tunga Bailoa is struggled bad in big games. And this week in a freezing, and that's being nice, game in Kansas City. That's the biggest reason the Miami Dolphins will not win the Super Bowl. To the Cleveland Browns, the five seed in the AFC, their biggest weakness is January Joe is a turnover machine. January Joe referring to Joe Flacco, who has 10 playoff victories on his resume with the Baltimore Ravens, uh, has an exceptional. I always compare Joe Flacco to Madison Bumgarner. Like, both were good to very good at points in the regular season. Once, in Bumgarner's case, October rolled around, and for Flacco, January or February rolled around, he turned into a different quarterback. He turned into a type of dude that could go blow for blow with Brady or Manning. Uh, and Joe Flacco's come in, led the league in touchdown passes, I think at least before that game where he sat him against the Bengals last week, uh, led the league in touchdown passes to that point since the Bengals, or the Bills, Bills, Browns put him in the starting lineup as the starting quarterback. He leads in touchdowns, he also leads in picks. He's thrown eight picks in the last month and a half. So that's a problem for Cleveland. They struggle with the turnover battle. After that, I like this roster. It's a good defense. Struggles on the road a little bit. But Miles Garrett, we know the overpowering force that he is. Good secondary linebacking core. Tremendous coach in Kevin Stefanski. Uh, great pieces offensively, even with the loss of Nick Chubb, Amari Cooper, David Njoku, etc. Great offensive line. But the two limited quarterback, that's what's going to cost them. January Joe has been a turnover machine. That is why the Cleveland Browns will not win this year's Super Bowl. To the four seed, the team the Browns are going to be playing, the Houston Texans. Their biggest weakness is... Special talent, just too young. Houston's coming. CJ Stroud's coming. D'Amico Ryan's are coming. They are on the up. Uh, they're, they're on the uptick. Nico Collins, young receiver they've got over there. Houston's going to be really, really good for years to come. It's just too young. Nobody could have seen this coming with the Houston Texans. If you predicted the AFC South before the season, I was a Jacksonville Jaguars guy. Some said Tennessee. Uh, I mean, there, there were even. You know, uh, I believe there, there might have been sort of the fringes taking Indianapolis with Anthony Richardson had he been healthy, and they almost did. Uh, but for the fact of the matter is, for this team to go from irrelevant number two pick in the draft last year to bring in C.J. Stroud, do well in the draft the last few years, Nick Casario, the GM, has done a fantastic job, former Patriot guy, uh, to, to bring in this talent, develop into a team that's capable of making a playoff run, potentially not really a long run, but to make a little bit of noise to scare somebody in the playoffs, Props to them. D'Amico Ryan's arguably coach of the year. CJ Stroud, inarguably offensive rookie of the year. It's just too young of a team. No quarterback in the history of the NFL has led their team to the Super Bowl as a rookie. I anticipate that streak will continue. That 
is why the Texans will not win the Super Bowl. To the team that did win the Super Bowl last year, the defending champion Kansas City Chiefs, their biggest weakness is they turn the ball over and they don't take the ball away. Kansas City Chiefs bottom five in the NFL in turnover differential. They don't take the football away on defense and they turn the ball over way too much on offense. In the games that the Chiefs have won the turnover battle, a little basically think of the Chiefs as the Pittsburgh Steelers with an infinitely better quarterback and a better offensive scheme, obviously, is the fact that Kansas City has lost one game all year. One game in which they have won the turnover battle. That was way back in week one against the Detroit Lions. Every other game, they don't turn the ball over or they don't turn the ball over as much as the opponent. They win. So this game against Miami, kind of an opportunistic defense. Jalen Ramsey, we'll see what happens in his matchup with whoever he's lined up against. And, and even in the future, assuming Kansas City wins the game, not turning the football over because they just simply don't have the margin for error that they used to. No Tyreek Hill. Last year, the offense was far better than this year's offense. Travis Kelsey's getting up there in age. Uh, Kansas City cannot afford to shoot itself in the foot. Uh, so listen, they turn the ball over too much. They take the ball away too much. That is why the Kansas City Chiefs will not win the Super Bowl this season. To the 2 C Buffalo Bills, who my Steelers will be playing on Sunday, their biggest weakness is... They routinely have stretches of awful offensive football. Awful. When you think about Buffalo, they could have games like all the way back in week four against Miami in which they score 48 points. And then they could play Miami again later in the season and score 21 points. So less than half. They could play the Jets all the way back in week one and not break 20, play them again later in the season, score over 30 points. So this is a team that's very hot and cold, up and down, uh, and kind of reflects their quarterback to a certain degree. I always said Josh Allen, I said on Monday's show after that game, I said that he is the ultimate, are, Josh Allen, are you insane? Or really, are you insane? Where it's, he makes an amazing play with his arm or his legs. Are you insane? Look at this guy. And then he makes the, the, the boneheaded errors, and you're like, are you insane? What are you doing? That's kind of how the Bills are on the offensive side of the ball, and we all know. Listen, the offense runs through the quarterback. Probably in no team more so than Buffalo in terms of Josh Allen's arm and his legs. That is why the Buffalo Bills will not win this year's Super Bowl. And to the 1C, they ain't got to play this week, so no, no weaknesses to worry about in the wild card round. The 1C Baltimore Ravens, their biggest weakness is fourth quarter concerns are a real thing. It is. It, it's a real thing for the Baltimore Ravens. Because, listen, this roster is phenomenal. Uh, it's the only one I think is comparable to San Francisco, especially on the defensive side of the ball. fact of the matter is this. Ravens have blown 10 double-digit leads since the 2020 season that leads the National Football League. This is something they've got to clean up, something that they've got to fix going into the postseason. Because, listen, when you're playing a Mahomes or a Josh Allen, or maybe if you end up playing a C.J. Stroud, these are dudes that can play from behind. It's kind of the anti-49ers. These are dudes that can play from behind and make some noise, make some do some damage on you. So this is something that the, that the Baltimore Ravens have got to correct. Uh, and listen, they have the personnel to do so. They have the best defense in football. They have the MVP of the league on offense. Again, this is it's a little nitpicky. Ravens fans might get mad at me, but if nothing else, I would respond and say it's actually kind of a compliment because there's not really any weaknesses other than that. Uh, this is obviously the, 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 the betting favorite in Vegas to not only win the AFC, but to win the Super Bowl, rightfully so. That is the biggest reason the Baltimore Ravens will not win the Super Bowl. Thanks so much for watching the show on YouTube, and be sure to go click that big red subscribe button and check out the other clips and full shows from Carving It Up Live, as well as our other incredible content creators here on the Grid Network.